Hey there, what's going on? My name is Bessie Painda. Welcome to project 13 of 100 with project series. And in this video, we'll be cloning Material UI's ripple effect button using only HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. It's like a series of ripples that expand across the water when you drop an object into it. All right, so without any further ado, let's dive right into it. I already have my code data opened in here and did some pretty much basic configuration right here. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the markup. It's gonna be button with the class of button, button-ripple, and the text is simply ripple effect. There we go. And now if I run this in live server, well, this is how it is gonna look. And back into style.css, all the way down up until here, get the button, add a padding, one rim, and two rims, slightly bigger. And then a font size, let's bump this up to two rim, then get rid of the outline, and also get rid of the border as well. And for the button-ripple, I'm gonna use this background color that I already come up with. Okay, let me copy that and paste it right here. And for the color of it, it's going to be like pure white here. And then the border radius of that is like four rim. All right, so this is how it is gonna look. And for the hover effect, I'm gonna add a little bit of the box shadow here. So when I hover over, then I want to add that box shadow. So let's get rid of that. And then the box shadow, zero pixels for the X and Y offset. I don't want any blur for pixels or GBA. Again, 0.1 for the alpha. All right, so this is how it is gonna look. And down here, I'm gonna also add a transition for the box shadow. 0.3 second is in and out. And now if I hover over that, the transition is added. And now in the script.js, I'm gonna grab all the buttons, that's document.query select for all, get all the button dash ripple class, and then buttons dot for each. Okay, button dot add event listener and hooking this click event listener here. Actually, uh, I'm gonna run this function. All right, now I'm gonna get the X coordinate here. That's equal to E dot client X and then the Y coordinate. That's Y underscore coordinate. That's equal to E dot client Y. There we go. I'll explain it in a little bit why we need X coordinate and Y coordinate, but for now, I'm gonna console.log the X coordinate and Y coordinate. So if I just inspect this in the console, you'll see that if I click anywhere, the X coordinate and Y coordinate of wherever you click is gonna be logged in the console like this. So and the one that I earlier clicked is X coordinate is 192 and its Y coordinate is 98. Now we need to position this button. So where exactly is this button positioned? From the left and from the top. So for that to do, again, I'm gonna define this variable here, button top position, that's equal to e.target. e.target essentially wherever in the button that I click, okay? So e.target dot offset top, okay? And then button left and underscore position, that's equal to e.target dot offset left. If I just console.log e.target just to make this a little bit more clear. So this is going to just log the button wherever I click. So you can see the button is being logged right here. If I click that again, so there it is. It's only the button. We are getting is offset top and is offset left. And then we're gonna subtract it from the X coordinate and Y coordinate to get its X and Y coordinates of wherever we are clicking to. So in that case, I'm gonna say let X that's equal to X coordinate minus button position lift and then for the y that's equal to y coordinate minus button position top there we go and as a final step in order to create this ripple effect right here so whenever i'm clicking this is nothing but a span that's going to gradually increase and then it's going to fade out okay so for that span we're going to create it dynamically wherever i click so for that to do i'm going to create this span here document dot create element and then the span goes right here and add a class of ripple to that and then we're gonna handle that through CSS dot add the class of active uh, excuse me ripple there we go and now to position this span relative to the button here I'm gonna say span dot style dot top that's equal to 
I'm going to use template literal, so here white pixels. And then similarly for the for the lift here, it is X pixels. All right, so this is how it is going to look. And the final step is that this start, let me actually get rid of this console.log, we don't need it anymore. So this start a pin child, the span right here. Okay, so now what's going to happen is that first we need to also add that class of ripple here so it's going to have a width of like 50 pixels and similarly a height of 50 pixels and then it's going to have a background color i'm going to go with slightly obvious color so you can see what's going on let's position this as absolute and for the button ripple i'm going to position this as relative there we go now in the elements if i just hover over that and actually let's move this down a little bit all right, so if I click that, you'll see that the first time I click on there, and this span is created right there with width of 50 pixels and height of 50 pixels with this color. And right here in the markup, you can see that it's been added to that with the top nine pixels and lift uh, 116 pixels, okay? So if I click anywhere in there, you can see that the span is created. Now we did this up until this point. Now what I want to do is that open clicking, First, I want to change its color and gradually it should fade out and it should be like a ripple that's happening like in the water as I said earlier. Okay, so back into the document, I'm going to just close this out. Now, I don't want this to stay right there till eternity. I just I want to get rid of that. It's going to be like set time out here. So set time out and it's going to take a callback function that's going to start remove child here and then span and span and then for 500 milliseconds, this is essentially half a second. If I click that, after 500 milliseconds, that's gone. So now in style.css, I'm gonna go back and right here, I'm gonna add this, tron excuse me, that's actually transform, and then translate, minus 50% and minus 50%, okay? So, uh, well, this is supposed to go for the ripple here, actually. So when I click that, you can see that it's created right in the center of the cursor, like that. So compared to its previous case, if I just comment this out and click that, you can see this is where it's created. So now it's created in the center. Now I can get rid of these two things. I can create this background color with RGBA, RGBA, and then 0, 0, 0, and 0 0.1. There we go. And also it's going to have a simple animation of that ripple effect here and in span of 0 0.3 seconds and ease out. Go, let's create the ripple effect here, keyframes of the ripple effect, and then from, and then here we have this too. Okay, so I want this to start from the width of like 0 pixels and the height of 0 pixels. I want this to span up until width of like Let's go with 200 pixels width and height. And finally, the opacity of zero. Opacity set this to zero. And now what's gonna happen is if I click that, you can see we still see that little nice effect, but we need to obviously overflow set this to head in there. So now if I click that, well, you can barely see that because uh, it's like, it has to be like at least 0 0.7 for that too. Okay, so there it is. And now for this ripple effect, also we need to set the border radius for this. So it's like a circle of 50%. Now if I click that, you can see it is created, right? And wherever you click, that ripple effect is being created. And if I decrease it to five, and now if I click that, well, that is it. And also you can bump this up to 400 pixels. So this looks a little bit nicer. Well, there we go. All right, so that was it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And then if you did, make sure to drop a like, leave a comment. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the bell notification for more videos. And I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.